Good morning, Faith Promise. How are we doing this morning? Okay, that was kind of weak, but I'm going to move on because I got a timer. Uh, if we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Nate, and I get the privilege of serving as one of the student pastors here at the Pellissippi campus. And whether you are in the room, you're watching online, or God Behind Bars, we're so glad you're here with us. And uh, welcome to the family. And I'm just honored to be on, on this platform. Uh, and I'm, I'm also honored to be a part of a church that doesn't just say they believe in the next generation, but we actually put our money where our mouth is, and we say... Yeah, yeah, we say we, we believe in our students. We believe in students, and God is doing an amazing work in our students, and I'm so grateful for what Gen Z is going to become. And I don't know what you've seen in the news. I don't know what you've seen on social media, but things from your perspective might seem dark. People, the next generation, Gen Z, our teenagers right now, they might seem lost, but I'm so glad that we're part of a church, and I'm so glad that we serve a God of hope and of love, and he says, our best days are in front of us and not behind us. Come on. Praise God. And I'm honored to be here with you today, and I'm also honored to be here with my friend. Maritza. Yes, this is Maritza. Maritza, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'd love to. My name is Maritza. I'm 15 years old. I'm about to be a sophomore next week, which is terrifying. Um, of my mom, my three brothers. But Nate, you haven't asked me about what just happened. Like, are you, did you forget or do you just like, I'm just not understanding. Uh, like worship like, and the students? No, 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 no. Like Friday, Saturday, oh, students. Oh, the weekend. Not quite. It was the weekend. Movement? Yes. Ah, movement. Maritza, tell us your movement highlight. What was one of your favorite moments for movement? High school had like a late night rodeo party, so I got to dress up as a pink cowgirl. It was so much fun. I learned how to Latin dance. Yeah, I learned how to I didn't learn Con Ijo though, which was really disappointing. Oh, but sorry about that. It's okay. Um, and then Saturday, God was here. He moved. There was so much healing. There was so much just, he was there, and it was so great to experience. Yeah, yeah. One of one of actually my favorite moments from movement uh, is actually we we as in you. If 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 you give to Faith Promise, you helped us purchase Bibles for each and every student who attended movement conference. And so, thank you for your generosity for putting the Word of God in Gen Z's hands. And this is like such a cool Bible. If you are newer or newer in your faith, go and look up the Telos Bible. It is so cool. It's one, it's aesthetically pleasing. And uh, two, there's just, it's just filled with some great stuff in there. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the NIV and it's just, it's great. It's awesome. And so thank you church for helping us do that and being part of putting the Word of God in students' hands. Well, uh, this whole month we've been in a series we've titled Peace of Mind, where we have been talking about mental health, where we've been talking about uh, the things in our mind. And uh, I don't know if, if, you've, if you've recognized this or not, but, but, but Gen Z, um, they, they have taken mental health to a whole nother level, and I think it's because they had to. I don't know about you, but being a teenager, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. Uh, but then you throw a COVID-19 pandemic in the midst where you're in the middle of high school, middle school, some of them elementary school, and you're used to going out and playing on the playground, and then all that stuff gets taken away from you. Like, mental health is a big issue to them because it, it's real for them. And so as I love that we're here, I've got a student on stage with me, and, and as, as I've gotten to know Maritza, she's been a part of our summer internship and is just a, a student leader of part of our uh, FP Students Ministry here on, on Wednesday nights, and gotten to know her story, and as, as we've been preparing for this moment, uh, I just, I wanted Maritza to tell her story uh, and to tell her testimony. And just right off the jump, Maritza, I just got to tell you, I'm so proud of you. Uh, we did, yeah, yeah. And so first question I just got to ask you is just tell us a little bit about your life before Christ. I would love to. My parents have been fighting my whole life since I was like five up to fifth grade when I got a divorce. And it's really hard. If you guys know what I'm talking about, it's an awful feeling, no matter how many times it happens or 
just every single time it hurts and it's just a feeling and I hated it and that itself had such a big toll on my mental health but specifically this one situation when I was in the fifth grade it led my mom to take me and my three brothers to a family crisis center and this was really hard because I've never lacked anything I've never had necessity and so for everything to be like taken away from me to not have a home transportation like money for food it was really a hard I felt hopeless uh, I came really depressed and I just walked life thinking that this was it. This is what life had for me and I was just to deal with it. Until five months later, we lived in that for five months and then mom was able to get back on her feet. We got her home and okay, I'm good, right? Like I, I have to be good. We're out of the situation. Everything's gonna go back to normal. I'm gonna be great. But that just wasn't the case. I'm still struggling with depression. I'm now at this new school where no one looks like me and I'm trying to win their approval. I'm trying to like, measure up to them, and I just felt so much less than. Hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Maritza. Um, thankfully, that's not the end of your story. So would you tell us about how you came to faith in Jesus? It was sixth grade during quarantine. Okay. Uh, I was on TikTok. I what? Saw, I, I was on TikTok. Hold on. One more time so they can hear it in the back. Okay. You, you were where? TikTok. And what happened? I found Jesus through a TikTok. Well, hold up. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, TikTok, okay. Uh, it must have been some like super deep theologian. Obviously. And he, you know, yes. he just painted the picture of the depravity of man. Exactly. And, and That's exactly he it. He used big words like propitiation mm -hmm. and all these things yes. for, I sent some sarcasm. Yeah, no, that was not it at all. Okay, we actually have the TikTok. You, you guys want to watch it with us? Let's, 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 let's see it. Okay, no offense. Okay. <laughs> what did I just watch? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I saw this video late at night when I was in the sixth grade, and it's just a girl in her church experience. Yeah. And it reminded me of the time when I, like, went to church when I was, like, second fourth grade with, this, like, family that I had met. But it wasn't anything serious. But that video reminded me of the time of when I was at church. That was the only place I've ever felt love. It's the only place where I've ever felt true peace. And so Leda and I started sobbing after I watched that like 10 second video. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that whatever this was, wherever this was gonna lead me, I had to experience it for myself. So late at night, I gave my life to Jesus that day. Come on, is that not? God can use anything, even TikTok. God can use anyone. It, it, that wasn't even a Christian song. <laughs> it was just someone sharing their experience of what God did in their life. And so you, are you sharing what God has done in your life? You don't need to post a TikTok, but the people you're around in your everyday life, can they see Jesus in you? Can they see the work that the Holy Spirit has done in your life? Jesus has called us to win our world. And what that looks like doesn't have to be the same for everyone. It doesn't have to be eloquent words or big theological ideas. But you can share what God has done in you, what he's going to do through you. You can share the hope and the love of Jesus right where you're at, and God will use you. Come on, okay. I got a couple of you on board. Okay, Maritza, so you mentioned mental health. Yeah. And so, so what was your experience with mental health and the church? Well, I struggled a lot with depression because of just everything that was going on. And no one in my family like believes in it. It's always a get over yourself like you're fine or we ignore it because we don't want it to be true. 
But specifically, uh, I heard a pastor say one time that if you're a Christian, you can't struggle with mental health. You can't have depression, you can't have anxiety. And at the time when I heard this, this was really empowering. Because that meant that what I was going through wasn't depression, it wasn't anxiety. Um, but it just really left a bad mark on how I viewed mental health and how I handled it. I started to believe that what I was going through wasn't valid and that I was just being dramatic about it. So I began to isolate because you don't want to share this with anyone. Yeah. Uh, that, that wasn't a faith promise, Pastor. No, it was just, Alex Adams. Yeah. yeah he told me was, that. No. no, it wasn't anyone here. It, it wasn't. That's really funny, Maritza. <laughs> uh, that was good. Um, Okay, so what is something you wish you would have heard instead? That we live in a broken world. That we live in a sinful world and it's awful. And because of that, mental health is real and it's hard. But we also serve a God who wants us to walk in freedom. We serve a God who wants to heal us from that. Yeah. Mm. So Maritza, how has God brought healing to your life? Healing for me didn't come in an instant. I believe that it can. Last night at Movement, I so believe people walked out of here free of depression, free of anxiety. But for me, but that just wasn't the case for me. It was a process. Um, as I began to come to church more, as it began to open up, which was terrifying for me at one point, because you don't want to be a burden to anyone. You don't want to add something onto them when they're already struggling. Um, and I just began to learn who God really was. I, he has completely transformed my life. I no longer walk in depression or hopelessness. I've been given a purpose and just a new direction of life. That's so good. There's something that you said that I, that I want to go back to. You, you said uh, that you were and still are beginning to learn more of who God really is. So what specifically did you learn of who God is? God doesn't want you to hide. He's not intimidated by your worries or fears. Like... Sometimes you just have to come to God with all that. Hey, like lay it down at his feet as your father. Like he knows you're struggling, but he also wants to hear that from you. Um, I also learned that you have to want freedom for yourself. When you get reminded of the place you were once at or when I struggle with my identity and who God says I am, the best thing I can do in that moment is tear down that lie immediately and go to him. Tell him that I'm struggling because yeah. he will help you. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Uh, what is a, a scripture that that you've held on to that just really encourages you matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says then jesus said come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens for i will give you rest take my yoke upon you for my yoke my yoke yep. is easy and uh, my, the burden i give you is light um when i first started reading the bible for myself this is i started in the book of matthew so this is the first time that i had read that there was someone out there who knew I was struggling, who knew there was a burden on me and offered to give rest to me and offered to let me walk in freedom. And people tell you all the time that Jesus loves you and that's true and it's impactful, but nothing compares to me reading that for myself, to opening God's word and be like, wow, there is someone who cares about me. There is someone who sees that I'm struggling and wants to help me. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, you've, you've had it sprinkled all throughout. Uh, and so some of us have caught it, but for those of us who haven't, what are maybe three things that from your story you say like, hey, uh, these three things are, are something we can apply to our lives, something that you've learned that, that you applied to your life that we all can apply to our life and take on our next step? I would say, number one, pray. Because yeah. God wants to hear from you and prayer is so powerful. Number two, read the Bible for yourself. We tend to get our scripture from everywhere else and never open, up, open it up ourselves. Yeah. But there's transformation when we open that book up. It mm -hmm. completely changes and renews us. And then three, find community. We isolate so much, and that's not God's intent for us at all. We're made for community. We're made to have people that build us up and encourage us. Yeah, that's so good. Can we encourage Maritza? Come on. So good. Awesome job, girl. Now you see why I have hope in the next generation, right? I want to take those three points that she gave us, she came up with on her own, and let's just dive a little deeper into those. The first one being prayer. Prayer. 
How's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? Matthew 6, Jesus is teaching us how to pray, teaching his disciples how to pray. And he says in verse 9, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's probably something, if you grew up in church, you know that. You have that memorized. But the last few weeks, I have been just kind of line by line walking through this prayer. And it has been just so fruitful to just sit with my father and just read our father in heaven. Man, I've, I've got a father in heaven who loves me, who sees me, who has given me a calling and purpose. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. And right here, hallowed be your name, I just take some time and I remind myself of who God is. I say, God, you are holy. You are set apart. There's none like you. You are good. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, the Almighty one. I take a moment and I remind myself of who God is because in that moment, when I take my mind off of my circumstances, when I take my mind off of my worries and I put them back on God, I put my focus back on God, there's something that shifts. My problems get put in their right place. My problems are not the Prince of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so I'm going to put my focus on Jesus and say, holy is your name. Then I move on. I say, your kingdom come and your will be done. Your kingdom come, God, in all of my circumstances, in everything in life that seems to be going a certain way. I say, your kingdom come. I don't want my will. My will is selfish. I want his will to be done. Because he sees things from a heavenly perspective, not my limited perspective. And give us today our daily bread. Man. Jesus is speaking to a Jewish audience, and the Jews would have, remember, would have recognized. It, it would have been like, boop, boop, notification. He's talking about Exodus. When the... Jews were freed from slavery and they were wandering the desert for 40 years and day after day after day after day God would drop manna to the ground and he would provide for his people on the daily and if they took any extra it would spoil because he's got them he has he is your daily bread Later in this passage, Jesus would say, do you not know how much our Heavenly Father cares for you? He gives flowers their petals. He clothes the birds. How much more does he care for you? It's not saying that we don't have to worry about the future. He's not saying that, that, that you, don't have to, you shouldn't think about the future. But he's saying, have you seen what I put right in front of you? Have you seen what I'm doing right now in your midst? You're so focused on tomorrow. You're so focused on next week, next quarter, that you are missing what I have for you in the right here and in the right now. And so for me, in this season of busyness, in this season where I'm tired, I go, God, you've given me everything I need for today. And so I trust you. And I'm, I'm going to walk in all that you have for me. I'm going to give everything that I have to today because I know you are going to sustain me tomorrow. And forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. That's a moment where I just go, God, forgive me for where I have sinned against you and where I've messed up with others. I know I'm not perfect. And God, help me forgive those who have wronged me. And lead us not into temptation. God, would you give me your eyes to see people the way you see people? 
God, would you give me your perspective on situations? Help me not to sin against my brother or my sister. But deliver me from the evil one. Prayer is so powerful. And I wonder, how are you doing communicating with God? It's not about getting the words right. But it's about going to the right source. Prayer should not be a last resort. It should be our first response. I'm a student pastor, and so I'm often thinking about middle school and high school for me. And I remember being in class. There's a test that day, and I didn't study. And so I throw up one final Hail Mary and say, Jesus, I'm not even asking for an A. Give me a B or a C. Good God Almighty. It's not a last resort, but prayer is our first response. Secondly, she said, read the Bible for yourself. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Scripture is good, y'all. The thing that I love about scripture is when I read it, it's the only book that starts to read me back. <laughs> it starts to show me my faults. It starts to show me where I'm wrong, where I need a little rebuking, even though it hurts. Where I need a little correcting, where I need a little training in righteousness, in right living. Why? So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I wonder why you don't feel equipped for every good work. Maybe it's because you're not in the good word. I'm just going to let that one sit for a minute. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, so that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God has equipped you with his word. God can sustain you through his word. Would you use it? Then lastly, find community. I love last week, Dr. Big Daddy, he gave us a word about being in community. How it's not good for man to be alone. How we need friends. How we need people around us fighting for us, fighting the battle with us. You need people. We all need people. And man, as we head into this back in rhythm, as we get back into the rhythm of school and get back into the rhythm of the fall and get back in rhythm of all the things we've got going on, would you find community? Would you find some, some people? And maybe, you know what, like sometimes small groups are painted as like the flat tire friends, you know, like, man, when, when life gets tough, you got to call on these friends, which sometimes is the case. But also sometimes we need people who not just speak life into us, but also as Proverbs would say, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Sometimes we need people around us who are going, who are going to say, hey, you're not living up to your potential. Hey, you need to walk in more humility here. Hey, you're about to step into some stupid, and I see it, and I need you to stop it, because you're better than that. Sometimes you need some people to go, hey, you're not a victim. You are a victor through Christ Jesus. And so turn around, step aside, and let's go down the right path. That's why we need community. That's why we need prayer. That's why we need the word of God. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I think sometimes as we get older, I'm only 30, but I feel like I'm getting older, especially hanging around all these students. It can be so easy to go, yeah, those, those kids need to be in church. Those kids, they need to learn how to pray. 
Those kids, they need community. But how about you? Are you in the word? Are you with the word in the secret place of prayer? Are you living in community? Because you're not meant to live life alone. You cannot do it on your own strength. But through the power of the Holy Spirit and the people, the community that he's placed around us, we will find freedom, we will find hope, we will find restoration, and we will all walk to the Father together. So this morning, as we're about to respond together, you have an opportunity to do two of the application points. Well, I guess you could do all three if you pull out your Bible. But the first one, prayer. We're gonna have our prayer team up here. They wanna pray with you and for you. So that's the first point. Second one, maybe you wanna pull out your scripture. But lastly, doing life together. As you step forward in whatever's going on in your life, and you come up and you pray with this person, that's somebody else who's got your back. That's somebody else who says, I see you, I want you, I desire you, I've got you. So as we respond today, don't let the students be the only one who are going to come up front. I thought you're smarter and wiser and better. Can we stand? Let me pray for us. Jesus, we thank you that you are good. Jesus, we thank you that you have good things for us. And God, I pray right now for every single person, every single circumstance, God, that you would start to reveal to us all that you have for us. God, that we would be children who would just come to you. We thank you, God, that you tell us to come right as we are. And we thank you that you don't leave us right as we are. We thank you that you are a God of more, that you are a God of love, you are a God of freedom and purpose. And so Jesus, right now in this moment, I pray that people would move towards prayer, that people would move to your scripture, and that people would move to each other. Jesus, we submit this time to you.